Hello, welcome to Jason the Old Millennial. My name is Jason. I'm speaking to you here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. And I am doing a video um, ranking the best picture winners of 1970s. Um, I've been doing every decade, and now I'm up to, or down to the 1970s. And looking at this list, it's probably the best group of best picture winners I've seen so far in a decade. Um, I'd say 1980s was probably the worst group of best picture winners. Um, a lot of movies that no one's ever seen or heard of or cared about. These are also some some of the best movies um, are a lot of top lists um, of um, people that like movies and movie critics and, and so forth. Anyways, and definitely towards the top, it's really really some of the best movies ever made. Um, so yeah, very good decade for best picture winners. Uh, they knew how to pick uh, movies that were going to be well remembered, I think, um, which is a important part of best pictures, something memorable. Uh, but number 10, I have The French Connection, Best Picture 1971, starring Gene Hackman, Roy Scheider, a uh, cop drama where they're going after a French uh, um, drug dealer, kind of a gritty movie. Gene Hackman's character is a bit of a, a Poppy Doyle is a real rough cop, roughs up uh, people. Uh, not a real likable character. Um, yeah, it's not one of my, it's probably one of the movies I don't care about at all on this list. And I know a lot of people love this movie, I think maybe for the grittiness of the time and the tough cops kind of drama. And uh, I don't know, I just found this movie kind of boring personally. Didn't really care for the ending, it was kind of unsatisfactory. Obviously, there's a famous uh, car chase. Um, definitely was, you know, iconic and not bad. Probably the best part of the movie, really. Um, yeah, just not a movie I, I, I just didn't really care too much about. Number nine, I have Annie Hall, won Best Picture in 1977. Starring, starring Woody Allen, directed by Woody Allen, written by Woody Allen. Um, Diane Keaton playing the main character, uh, Annie Hall, wins Best Actress. A uh, movie um, dealing with uh, falling in love. Uh, we're becoming friends with, first Woody Allen's character becomes friends with Annie Hall, and then they kind of are, have a romantic relationship, and then they break up, and then they are friends at the end. So it's kind of a movie dealing with the, all the whole cycle of uh, a relationship between, between a man and a woman in this case, um, and one of the few comedies won Best Picture, obviously. Woody Allen wins Best Director and Best uh, Screenplay, also nominated for Best Actor, so a huge movie for Woody Allen. I can't say I've ever been a big Woody Allen fan or a big fan of any of his movies. Uh, I don't know, his comedies never really hit me that hard, I guess, and I know he's really huge and his comedies were really big at this time, and there are some funny parts of this movie and some funny lines for sure. Um, probably one of the best, better movies I've seen of his maybe as far as comedy goes. Story-wise, I didn't really care for the story because um, it doesn't really end, really doesn't end happy. I wouldn't say end sad, but it's just a very unsatisfactory ending to I'm like, why am I watching this movie? Why do I care about this relationship? That kind of thing. Anyway, so that's what makes me put it so far down. Not to mention it beat Star Wars for Best Picture, which is a huge tragedy of the Oscars. Um, number eight, I have The Sting, 1973, starring Paul Newman, Robert Redford. Um, movie kind of set in the, I want to say, 1920s or 1930s. Uh, and these two kind of con men, uh, and they're dealing with like some kind of mafia. I can't remember a lot about this movie. I remember thinking it was a decent movie at the time. I, it was a while since I've seen it. Um, but they're like con men. They're trying to do this big con, The Sting, as they call it, at the end. Um and there's some decent scenes I remember. There's a poker scene that's pretty good on the train with Paul Newman. And then the ending is a very, like, uh, kind of a twist ending, kind of in a way. Really catches you off guard, but uh, makes the movie kind of interesting. Uh, and satisfactory ending to it. Um, yeah, I think it was a decent movie. I don't remember a whole lot about it. But I think it's a movie probably worth uh, watching. Anyways, um, yeah. So at number seven, I have The Godfather Part Two. Obviously one of the biggest movies of this decade. The biggest movies of all time. It's in a lot of top ten lists. It'd probably be top one or two for most people of this decade. Um, for me, it's a little long. It's a little boring. Uh, it's not the most interesting. It's two movies in one. It's a sequel and a prequel. Sequel dealing with uh, Michael Corleone and what he does with the family. And the prequel, because it kind of journeys um, Don Corleone's uh, leaving Italy, coming to America as an orphan. And uh, his rise to power, um, played by Robert uh, Robert De Niro. 
I actually like the Robert De Niro part, the prequel part, better than the sequel. So if this movie was just the prequel part, I think I would actually quite like this movie. I actually quite enjoyed that story of Don Corleone coming to America and rising to power. So, like, to me, if it was just that movie, I think I would like it more. It'd be higher on my list. And because they had the two, it was just so long. Uh, just too much going on. But, obviously, a lot of great performances. Al Pacino, I said Rob De Niro won an Oscar. Uh, Dan Keaton, Rob Duvall, John Cazale, Tal Talia Shire. Great great uh, cast, for sure. Um, number six, I have The Deer Hunter uh, from 1978. Starring Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken. Uh, John Cazale has his last, last role that he did. Uh, Meryl Streep, one of the first roles of her that I've seen of hers at this time. Um, and it's a dark drama about uh, going to v uh, friends from Pittsburgh going to Vietnam and then dealing with the hardships. Uh, they are in a POW camp, uh, get abused quite a bit, have to play Russian roulette uh, against the Wills. And then dealing with the aftermath of coming back home, and their lives obviously definitely changed. They have PTSD, especially Christopher Walken character. Christopher Walken gives us such a great performance, uh, won an Oscar for supporting actor, uh, especially when he came back home from the war. I mean, he's such a disheveled person. Um, anyway, so dealing a lot with, you know, the trouble of going to war and coming back, and a uh, very good... Um, uh, performances there by the cast good cast uh the scene with the russian roulette in the pow camp is uh such a haunting horrific scene but such a memorable scene such a tensity to it incredibly shot uh just on your edge kind of scene that that's why i kind of like this movie um i put um here um because i love that scene so much and uh just an incredible scene um and then the overall it's a sad ending movie but yet um, I don't know, just incredibly well done and great musical score. Anyway, so that's got Deer Hunter number six. Number five, I have number five, I have Kramer versus Kramer from 1979, starring Dustin Hoffman and also Meryl Streep winning her first Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Hoffman winning Best Actor. Um, it's a, a drama, of divorce, courtroom, child custody drama, where the wife leaves the family and the husband has to be a, um, a single father. And him dealing with that, you know, being a single father and working and trying to raise a son. And then she comes back and wants custody. And, of course, he's like, you left us. How, why should you have custody? You know, here I'm working hard, taking care of my son while you left. You know, now you want to come back. And so then they have to go to court. And I love the, uh, the courtroom drama part. Of the And uh, towards the end of the movie, I think it was really well done. Really great performances by the t those two actors. Um and I love the back and forth about, you know, who should have custody. You know, usually a woman gets custody of the child, but, you know, there's some arguments to, to be said for Dustin Hoffman's character saying, you know, why can't a man, um, ha, you know, take care of his son or take care of his child, you know, um, just because he's a man, he doesn't get the rights, you know. So I think there's some interest, interesting dialogue there between uh, what goes on there with child custody. Anyways, and just really well done drama. Uh, that's why I got number five. Number four, I have One Flew with the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, one of the most one of the biggest movies from this decade. Of course, starring Jack Nicholson as uh, Murphy, uh, one's best actor for this movie. Uh, Louise Fletcher, one's best actress for playing Nurse Ratched, this uh, horrible uh, character. Brad Dourif getting nom first movie for him, get nominated for best point actor. It's really, really great performance for him. Uh, maybe should have even won. Uh, um, such a good performance. Um, and a lot of other uh, good supporting actors here in this movie. Um, and it deals with being in, Murphy being in a kind of insane asylum. He doesn't really belong there, but he can't leave. And then him trying to get out. But he's also trying to help the uh, in people in the asylum. And Nurse Ratch is ter terrible, so he's fighting against her control over everybody. And trying to get some kind of freedom. Trying to get this feeling of freedom for the other uh, people in the asylum that are kind of, you know, I said kind of abused somewhat mentally uh, by the nurses and so forth. And so he's actually not a good person, but yeah, he's trying to help a little bit. And he's definitely not as bad as Louis, as a Nurse Ratched. So uh, you kind of root for him. Um, the ending's not necessarily a happy ending. I kind of like the ending, though. There is some satisfactory there that the Murphy character is never de totally defeated. Uh, he's never going to, you know, live his whole life um, in this asylum, 
in a sense. Uh, he's never going to be totally controlled by them. He's, uh, you know, he doesn't want that, and that doesn't happen in a way. Um, anyway, so yeah, interesting drama there. Another kind of dark, dark uh, drama there, but uh, really good performances. Very interesting idea for a movie. Um, so I have it number four. Number three, I have Patton. Great World War II drama about uh, General uh, Patton during World War II, played by George C. Scott. Um, great performance by him, winning Best Actor. And it's just a movie about Patton. He's such an interesting character, kind of rough. Uh, he's not very good at politics, so he's kind of not honored as much as some of the other uh, generals and not promoted as well, even though he does such a great job. And he's, uh, I love that he's just, you know, he, he won't take defeat. He will do everything he can to have victory. And that's what we need in World War II or any war is generals to do, do what's difficult to win. Um, and that's why I said he's a little rough, maybe around the edges, but, and, you know, it kind of needed to be that way, um, to push his, uh, soldiers to victory. Anyways, yeah, so it's just a good movie about, um, about Patton and, um, what he did in World War II. I really enjoyed it. Number two, I have The Godfather, obviously one of the biggest movies of all time, uh, considered the greatest movie by many. Um, won 1972, obviously great cast, Al Pacino, should have won Best Actor, but yeah, Marlon Brando playing Don, the Godfather. I didn't, that wasn't very good, but yeah, Marlon Brando playing the Godfather himself, winning Best Actor. Um, James Caan as the hothead Sonny. Uh, John Cazell as the Frito, the idiot, incompetent brother. Of course, opportunity the young brother who kind of eventually takes over the family. And the uh, Diane Keaton, Tyler Shire. Uh, Robert um, Duvall is really great in the movie. Uh, I would say the, this is one of the best movies just to watch really good actors act. <laughs> the actors, when their scenes with just them in a room acting is so good um, because the performers are so good. Uh, great dialogue. I love the, di the screenplay and dialogue in this movie. Um, just wonderful. I love the dynamics between the brothers. And I just love the journey of Michael not wanting to be part of the, fam uh, part of the business of the mafia. Um, but then because of his loyalty to his family, and he ends up becoming the leader. So I love that whole journey there. It's very interesting. And just a very well done movie um, overall. Another great uh, musical score. Everything. So that's The Godfather number two. Then number one, one of my favorite movies of all time. It had to be Rocky. Uh, from 1976, starring Sylvester Stallone. Tyler Shire as Adrian. Uh, you got Burt Young. Carl Weathers as Apollo. Really great. And then Burgess Meredith. Uh, Rocky. You know, it's the kind of rough... Uh, uh, boxing manager should have won an Oscar for Best Point Actor. He's so good in this role. Sylvester Stallone, incredible. He wrote the screenplay, of course. Stars in it. Um, such a great character. Such an underdog character. Such a likable character who's actually really, actually vulnerable. He's he's tough but vulnerable, and he's actually nice to people and wants to do good by people. And you just really root for him at the end in the last boxing match, even though he doesn't have a chance to win. Um, and he just loved it at the end, and he's just, Adrian, you know, he doesn't care about winning, he just wants Adrian, I love you, you know, he loves Adrian so much, and I love that relationship, and just, he's just a fun character to root for, and you feel so good at the end, I mean, the ending is just like, oh, it just uh, hits you so hard, uh, very emotional movie, uh, yeah, I can't say enough, absolutely love Rocky, one of my favorite movies of all time, my favorite Best Picture winner here in 1970s. So that's my list of Best Picture, my rankings. Uh, comment on what you think, what's your favorite of these lists, um, of these movies. And just uh, really thank you for watching and liking, and thank you for subscribing and supporting my channel. And I just wish you the best. Have a good day.